Hello. In this video, we are going to prove the following theorem. Suppose G is an abelian group and H and K are subgroups of G. Then the set HK, which consists of the elements of the form H times K, where H is an element of H and K is an element of K, is a subgroup of G. Now, to prove that HK is a subgroup of G, we are going to use the two-step subgroup test, which tells us the following. If we're given a group G, and we're given H is a non-empty subset of G, well then, if H is closed under the operation of G, in other words, for all elements A and B and H, A times B is an element of H, and for all elements A and H, the inverse of A is an H, then we can conclude that H is a subgroup of G. So replacing H with HK, we are going to show that HK is a subgroup of G. So to start with the proof, let's suppose that the identity element of G is E. And from here, we are going to use the two-step subgroup test to show that HK is a subgroup of G. Now first, we need to verify that HK is a non-empty subset of G. Now of course, HK is a subset of G, but how come HK is non-empty? Well, to show that HK is non-empty, we can show that the identity element belongs to HK. To see how, well since H and K are subgroups of G, well then we know that the identity belongs to both H and K. So since E is an element of H and E is an element of K, well then E times E fits the form to be an element of HK. And E times E is equal to E, so E is an element of HK. And so this shows that HK is not empty. So now, let's verify that HK satisfies these two conditions. We're first going to show that HK is closed under the operation of G. And to do that, let's consider two arbitrary elements, A and B, in HK. From here, we want to show that A times B belongs to HK. Now, since A is an element of HK, this means that A has this form. So we can say that A is equal to H1, K1, where H1 is an element of H and K1 is an element of K. Also, since B is an element of HK, that means B has this form. So we can say B is equal to H2, K2, where H2 is an element of H and K2 is an element of K. Now, since H and K are subgroups of G, we know that H and K are both closed under the operation of G. So if we multiply any two elements of H together, the result is an element of H. If we multiply any two elements of K together, the result is an element of K. So in particular, H1, H2 must be an element of H, and K1, K2 must be an element of K. So, this means H1, H2 times K1, K2 fits the form to be an element of HK. But the claim is that A times B is equal to H1, H2 times K1, K2. So, let's show that. First of all, we can replace A with H1, K1, and we can replace B with H2, K2. And then, since the associative law holds for groups, we can move the parentheses around K1 times H2, K2. And then we can move the inner parentheses around K1, H2. And then, since G is abelian, that means any pair of elements in G commute. So, we can swap K1, H2 and write it as H2, K1. But then, by the associative law, we can move the inner parentheses around K1, K2. But then, by the associative law again, we can move the outer parentheses around H1, H2. And, we saw earlier, this is an element of HK, because it fits the form to be an element of HK. So this shows AB is an element of HK. And so we're done. This shows, given any two elements A and B in HK, we have that A times B 
is an element of HK. So that verifies that HK is closed under the operation of G. So now let's show the second condition is true. Now to prove the second condition, let's give ourselves an arbitrary element A in HK. The whole goal is to show that the inverse of A also belongs to HK. Now since A is an element of HK, this means that A has this form. So we can say A is equal to HK for some element H in H and some element K in K. Now, since H and K are subgroups of G, this means if you give me any element of H, then its inverse must also belong to H. If you give me any element of K, then its inverse must belong to K. So in particular, the inverse of H must belong to H, and the inverse of K must belong to K. And so this tells us that the inverse of H times the inverse of K fits the form to be an element of HK. But the claim is that the inverse of A is equal to the inverse of H times the inverse of K. And so that will show that the inverse of A is an element of HK. And to see how that happens, well, let's write out the inverse of A. Now, since A is equal to HK, this means the inverse of A must be the inverse of HK. But in general, when we're working with two elements in a group, say A and B, then the inverse of A times B is equal to the inverse of B times the inverse of A. So the inverse of HK must be equal to the inverse of K times the inverse of H. But G is abelian, so any pair of elements commute. So we can swap these two. This is just the inverse of H times the inverse of K. And so this shows that the inverse of A is equal to the inverse of H times the inverse of K. And familiar, this fits the form to be an element of HK. And so this shows that the inverse of A belongs to HK. And so putting this together, we have shown given any element A in HK, it follows that its inverse must also be an element of HK. So we have verified the second condition. So this verifies all conditions for HK to be a subgroup of G. And so by the two-step subgroup test, we can conclude that HK is a subgroup of G. And so this completes the proof. And so yeah, that's pretty much it for this video.